In this video lesson, we continue to explore the new industrial age and we focus on big business and labor. Andrew Carnegie immigrated from Scotland at age 12. He worked for the railroads and became the private secretary of the superintendent of the Pennsylvania Railroad. As a reward, he was given a chance to buy stock. He started investing his money and by 1865, he left the railroads and started his own steel mill. He's going to create some new business strategies that are going to make him become very successful. His success was due in part to the management practices that he put in place. One of the management practices was that he continually searched for ways to make products cheaper. He perfected machines and accounting systems. He also attracted talented people by offering them stock in the company and encouraged competition among employees. He also attempted to control as much of the steel industry as he could. He did this through something called vertical integration, which meant buying out his suppliers like coal fields, freighters, railroads, etc. He also engaged in something called horizontal integration, which meant buying out his competition. Through buying out his competition and his suppliers, he controlled almost the entire steel industry. He sold his business in 1901 to J.P. Morgan for $480 million. You can see in the picture and illustration at the bottom of the page, vertical integration involves purchasing of companies of all levels of production. So if you own a meat house, then you're going to also want to own a company that deals with the cattle, the slaughterhouse where the cattle go to be prepared, the railroad cars that the cattle are shipped in, or the meat is shipped in after they've been slaughtered, the cooled warehouses where it's stored, the packing plants where it's packed, and delivery wagons, which then basically deliver it to other businesses that you've sold to. And that would be vertical integration, where you control companies that are involved in all levels of production. Horizontal integration means the purchase of competing companies in the same industry. So you may own your own oil company, but then you're also going to want to own other refineries that are doing the same thing that you are so that you can eliminate competition. Carnegie attributed his success to hard work, shrewd investment, and innovative business practice. Others attributed it to a new theory which was called social Darwinism. This is how they explained why some were so wealthy while others remained poor. They believed in a concept of natural selection that less capable people were weeded out and therefore the rich were the most adaptable and adapted and capable people. They saw riches as a sign of God's favor and that the poor must be inferior and deserved what they got in life. And that is the concept and theory of social Darwinism. People like Horatio Alger promoted the possibility of rags to riches success for people who were virtuous and hardworking. And he wrote about stories about these, uh, this type of thought process. And people during the time period read this and aspired to be a rags to rich success story. Many industrialists pursued horizontal integration in the form of mergers. Mergers usually occurred when one company bought out the stock of another company. A firm that bought out all its competitors could achieve something called a monopoly and have complete control over the industry's production, wages, and prices. One way to create a monopoly was to form a holding company which was a corporation that did nothing but buy out the stock of other companies. Banker J.P. Morgan, pictured here in this picture, created the world's largest corporation when United States Steel, a holding company, bought out Carnegie Steel in 1901. Others, like John D. Rockefeller, took a different approach to achieving a monopoly. 
they joined with competing companies to form trust agreements. Participants in a trust turned over their stock to a group of trustees, people who ran the separate companies as one large corporation. They were not legal, but they were used anyway. Rockefeller used a trust to gain control of the oil industry in the United States. The name of the company was called Standard Oil. You can see in the political cartoon here, which we'll discuss in class, that this octopus is actually representative of Standard Oil. In 1870, Rockefeller's company refined 3% of the U.S. oil. By 1880, they were refining 90%. How did this happen? How was he able to do this? Rockefeller paid his employees poorly, undersold his competition, and when the competition went out of business, he raised prices above the original levels. Tactics like this earned industrialists like him the name robber barons. Many industrialists like Carnegie and Rockefeller were also philanthropists, though, and gave money away for the good of mankind to different charities. The government was very concerned the growing power of corporations would stop free trade, so they passed something called the Sherman Antitrust Act in 1890. It made it illegal to form a trust that interfered with free trade between the states or with other countries. It was poorly written, and all eight cases brought against corporations were actually thrown out of court. The government eventually gave up trying to control. In the next lesson, we'll discuss, we'll continue to look into a new industrial age, and we'll discuss labor unions and how they reacted to some of the business tactics that these businessmen that were becoming millionaires were using to become so successful.